Rashir, good to see you. Um, how much should we read into the fact that we didn't get a sell-off today? And where do the dollar and bond yields fit in from here? Well, for me, the real tell was what happened in the Middle Eastern markets itself. Uh, yesterday, they were open on Sunday and some of them today which is that most Middle Eastern markets were down only about 2%. Uh, so which is that here are these markets in the eye of the storm. The Israeli market was down close to 4%, but generally the Middle Eastern markets in the eye of the storm were only down a couple of percent, very different from what the news headlines would make us believe. So, and those markets, remember, many of those markets are dominated by local investors, and they have pretty good knowledge about what's happening on the ground. So that, for me, was the real tell which is that it's being perceived so far as a localized conflict, as something the region is used to seeing. And however terrible uh, this tragedy may have been, but the tell from the markets was something which I think really set the base for what the U.S. market ended up doing today. Yeah, it is indeed terrible and ongoing. So broadly, most recently, the New York Times, but uh, foreign policy, other publications recently have been talking about multipolarity, this idea that there's no longer one or two powers defining the action on the global stage, that deterrents don't work the way they used to. Perhaps what we're seeing in the Middle East now, the extremity of it is an example of that. Are there more risks that you see in this multipolar world? And what is the impact, you think, on investors? Well, first, having uh, seen these events for the last three decades, my uh, central belief here is that history is better remembered than it's lived, which is that we have always faced geopolitical risks. Even in the golden decade of the 1990s, I recall, uh, that there was this risk in the early 1990s that maybe the Soviet Union would launch a nuclear attack as a last gasp because it was disintegrating. Uh, so I feel that the geopolitical risk factor has always been there. It appears like a more fragmented world today, uh, but even in the 1990s or other times, we, uh, it resolved itself the right way, but it was a very uncertain time that we looked at. And then I was also looking back at the... Uh, instances of the last 50 years when you had major geopolitical uh, events uh, like you had over this weekend. And on average, what you see is a 5% decline in the markets uh, as a knee-jerk reaction to what happens. And then uh, on average, the markets recover the entire losses within two months. So I'd say that the world is used to living, at least the markets and investors are used to living with geopolitical risk Maybe it's gone up a bit because we have uh, U.S. and China, that conflict out there. Mm. But as I said, that history is better remembered than it's lived. So we have lived through the entire 2000s with the fear of terrorism after 9-11. Uh, and nine out of 10 times, these worst fears do not materialize. Yeah. And so the markets, I think, are better not focusing too much on geopolitics and returning to focusing on the economy and the Fed.